we met on the first day of college, at, which was in 1979, was it? Yes, it was. <laughs> Middlesex University, as it's called now. And we were introduced by a mutual friend who said, look after each other. And we have been looking after each other ever Isn't since. <laughs> in London at the time, was, was kind of thirsty for, you know, something to happen in the, in the fashion world in London. Big buyers weren't coming, you know, the press weren't coming. And we kind of thought, well, you know, we went actually went to New York to, to do this show called... New London in New, New York. York. So it's a With Suzanne club Barch. owner now, a very famous club owner, Suzanne Barch. At that time, I had her own shop and had become almost like an agent for in English individual designers. And she took everyone over there and put together a show. And it actually took all the L London designers going over to New York for the British fashion press to wake up and realise what they had on their own doorstep. And then everyone came back here. So it had been in Daily News Record, Women's Wear Daily, all the fashion bibles at the time then. And so then, of course, there was a huge explosion of interest into the British youth, street, fashion, culture, etc. So, kind of, from there we kind of just went off big time, stars overnight almost. We do our own in-house campaigns with photographers that were just starting out at the time, who actually later became very famous, Mario Testino, David LaChapelle. And then we'd have the, the runway shows, the catwalk shows. Our first solo show we called Cat in the Hat Takes a Rumble with the Techno Fish. So we were inspired by Dr. Zeus, Cat in the Hat, the black and white stripes, the funny gloves. And then we were also inspired at the same time by a film, a Francis Ford Coppola film, uh, Rumble Fish, uh, where that was just mostly black and white except for the fighting fish in the primary colours. So we inserted that into the show. And then the techno side of it was our print, the, the sort of mesh print that we did. Um, Helen Terry started the show by singing a cappella. She made up a song about body map and the, and the techno fish and, mm. and, and then it kind of just starts and the, the models just sort of took their own lead and they sort of did the whole dance thing up and down the runway. It kind of just led itself through. Really. Later on, we uh, Michael Clark, who we had a collaboration with, um, would choreograph our shows and also be in them. And I guess the, the most outlandish show was Is a Comet, where we had lasers, <laughs> Boy George, people singing. Um, Michael choreographed a piece based on Rite of Spring, which we had David's little niece uh, tumble over, girls fell down onto the catwalk, and then she tumbled over them right to the end of the catwalk. The <laughs> Sacrificial maiden. I'd say it's probably unusual for the generation above us, but in our generation, there were more people trying to do things off their own back and pulling on resources. Everyone was very creative and very resourceful. Lots of different types of people ended up, you know, wearing body map and saying they love body map. And not, on our not, shows, not always young either. Yeah. I mean, and not just thin, skinny models, yeah. tiny children. It was for everybody, really. It sort of mapped the, the whole look of every, everything and everyone. Mm -hmm.